this is quickly becoming my favorite way to test these amplifiers. All right, so uh, welcome, uh, friends. This is a Pioneer SX3400. And I have it open right now because I needed to deox some of the potentiometers. But when I opened it, I was just absolutely astounded at how little is in here. Now, if you've opened amps before, you'll appreciate what's going on here, uh, which is basically nothing, right? Uh, even uh, the primaries here, uh, there's just, there's nothing here. <laughs> uh, and as a result, uh, this thing sounds superb. I cannot believe how good it sounds. So uh, let's uh, just go through real quick what this uh, has to offer. Let's listen to some some of this here while we're while we're doing that. There we go. Nice relaxing rain. Okay, so foremost it has uh, the loudness control, and the loudness control, in my opinion, on this unit is an absolute godsend. Because otherwise it sounds really, really flat. And uh, I would imagine that's everything to do with the fact that this thing just is not pushing a lot of horsepower, obviously. I don't doubt, just looking at this, you know, maybe 20 watts. It's probably less than that. Uh, I should probably look it up before I get on these videos and start recording, shouldn't I? Anyway, so uh, you have your bass, treble, and I have the bass and treble up just a tad. So last night did a review on a Fisher, and the Fisher was definitely pushing at least 20. And uh, with these exact same speakers, and with the loudness control, I did not need to adjust the bass and treble any. Now on this one, I feel like I needed to just to get that realistic sound. Uh, and now if you're not here, of course, uh, to listen to it, you're on YouTube land, and YouTube land's audio is only as good as my recorder here, which is a GoPro, and they're not absolutely excellent. They're okay, sufficient for the price. So anyways, this is, uh, it does have a really good sound once it's dialed in. So very, very realistic. Uh, but anyways, my point that I was getting to is that uh, the table that this is sitting on does resonate the sound in the room a lot so when it's cracking like that the thunder is cracking it, it actually is convincing on this end so hopefully if you're listening on headphones it does sound halfway decent i've gone back and listened to a couple of the videos and eh, it's okay but i'm listening on my phone so maybe that's the issue all right so it has the uh Loudness, again, the treble and the bass, and I've got those tweaked up just a little bit. And then the treble and the bass are just continuous uh, potentiometers adjustment. Uh, so they don't lock into, they don't notch into position. The a, a lot of them do, some of them don't. Of course, the digitals nowadays, when you do with the remote, it gives you you know, you're pretty much setting at a one, two, three, four. This is just continuous. So you can really, really dial it in if you want to. This is good. The um, left, right uh, balance, it does have a notch right in the center. Um, from my ears perspective, it's even. And then the volume, well, first let's back over here to the left. You have the loudness control. And then you have a stereo mono. And it actually works really well. Uh, some of the music that I've been listening to today as I've been working behind us here, uh, is I've been listening to um, my uh, music service and it's, I've been switching it between mono and stereo and it's very interesting. It definitely changes the music. Uh, and I have not played with that anytime recently. So that was kind of a new experience. The a volume is crackly. I would say crackly is is probably uh, a good way to put it, but you can't really hear it now. But when I'm playing music, there it was a little bit. I have I've deoxed it twice. 
and uh, there it goes one you heard it on the left hand left channel so it does crackly crackly a little bit um, when it's just left stationary it does not crackle uh, it is just fine uh, on the inputs it has AM FM FM stereo and phono and auxiliary but what isn't on the rotary dial here is the monitor uh, for tape cassette so I have it on cassette right now and so the aux in was giving me uh, crackly and when I moved it over to the uh, tape it went away so it's definitely the in the uh, inputs back here the AVs uh, they could just need the aux or they could just be shot don't know but I will say on the cassette works just fine phono works just fine as well so those are that and then the dial here for radio dial works great let me turn it down don't want to wake up the dead oh got to turn the tape monitor off isn't that cool okay Yourself? Yes, I am talking to myself. I'm, I'm actually filming a video. Oh. Yeah. You can go upstairs, sir. Thank you for interrupting my video -ness. Anyways, FM dial works great. Works better on the mono. Oh, you know why it's not working? Because I don't have it. It's not for pro-life judges forever. Does it matter? Oh, it's it's just AM. condensation, right, like, emanating from the uh, the overhead compartments. The crew. Here's that sound. Thank you. All right, you get the point. Works just fine. All right, this is a cool unit. These are really cool. They do. They are pricey. A good working one on eBay is going for. Uh, you know, two, three hundred bucks. Uh, of course, this one has known issues. Probably won't be asking that much for it. So go out and take a look. Like and subscribe if you're in the market for a super duper, really simple amp. This, this is, this is awesome. Single board. I bet this thing is just easy as snot to work on. Thanks for watching.